What's up everybody, Brian Tong here and we've got new iPhone 15 developments and yes, more leaks. Apple's working on a new HomePod with a seven inch display and AirPods are getting new health features plus so much more. But let's start with the iPhone 15 and 15 Pro and a new video from Mako Takara shows off what's believed to be the first 3D printed iPhone 15 dummy units based on the new iPhone 15 and 15 Pro lineup. And guess what? They look a whole lot like the previous iPhone, but you know, there are some noteworthy things from these dummies. Now these purported physical mock-ups include the smaller display bezels, the even more curved edges and larger camera bumps. The dynamic island is expected to be on all four models this year. And we've talked about a potential single unified volume button and these 3D printed models show off just that where there's no separation and it's one piece for a volume rocker that also includes above it a new pressing type of mute button that is no longer a physical switch that moves side to side. So if you're curious how different the new iPhone 15 will be physically, based on these mock-ups, the answer is pretty darn similar to last year's iPhone. Now other features the new phones have been rumored to include are a new A17 Bionic chip, a USB-C port, and lighter titanium frame. A report by Barclays analysts claims Sony could supply the majority, if not all, of new LiDAR scanner components of this iPhone 15 Pro model for this year. This new scanner is believed to be more power efficient and potentially bring improved performance with less of an impact on battery life. Now, Apple's LiDAR scanner first came out with the iPhone 12 lineup in 2020 to measure the light distance and capture depth information, which is used for augmented reality features and photo features. So this could be a subtle improvement under the hood. Now, if we jump over to the iPhone 15 models, not the pros, there's no big surprises here, but the standard iPhone 15 models are expected to not bring ProMotion support and an always on display option like the pros. The current iPhone 14 plus has been touted as the best battery life on an iPhone to date. And we know Apple's iPhones have been deliberate in giving more advanced features at higher price points to differentiate their lineup. And this is no different here. Now there's been a lot of talk about better battery life with a more power efficient A17 Bionic chip, a more power efficient OLED display for this year's model, and an even more power efficient LiDAR scanner that I just talked about earlier. So could we see a significant battery life improvement for this year's iPhone of an hour, maybe two, or maybe something even crazier like three more hours of juice for a phone that pretty much gets me throughout the workday, but not all day. Now we'll see how much of all these differences just might add up in, you know when, September. Now I also wanted to showcase this report about the best selling smartphones globally for 2022 that just came out. Counterpoint Research's global monthly handset model sales tracker has followed the sales of smartphones from major markets like China, the US, UK, Germany, and France. And this year, Apple was the first company ever to have eight of the top 10 best selling phones for 2022. Now the iPhone 13 was the best seller, followed by the 13 Pro Max, and then the 14 Pro Max. Samsung has two phones on this list with the Galaxy A13 at fourth place and the Galaxy A3 at 10th. And you're gonna see the rest here, the iPhone 13 Pro, 12, 14, 14 Pro, and SE 2022, they make up the remainder of the list. But what stands out here the most to me is that, look, the 13 Pro Max and the 14 Pro Max were the number two and number three ranked on this list. And it was the first time that a Pro Max variant drove more sales than a Pro model. And then let's rewind a little bit about what a month ago, there were reports that Apple is working on an even higher tier iPhone Ultra model. And I mentioned at the time that, look, Apple's the one that knows the numbers to make that decision. And this data here absolutely supports the idea that people are willing to buy the top tier phone at its highest price point if it's an option. And why would then you look at the date of the 13 be number one? Well, that's because the 14 came out in mid-September, so it was only available for about three and a half months of the year, which makes the appearance of the 14 Pro Max even more impressive at number three on the list for all of 2022. And then for all you people in the comments that drop by and say, hey, Apple is making the same phone again, or Apple is dead. They're not. And look, the iPhone 12 from 2020 was number six on this list. That's kind of bonkers. Okay, okay, well, hey, at least it looks like the iPhone mini is dead because it wasn't anywhere on this list. Tear. Okay, back to the stories. And there's always news around Apple's AR VR headset that will reportedly be called the Apple Reality Pro. A report from the Financial Times claims Apple CEO Tim Cook and his operation chief Jeff Williams pushed to launch their mixed reality headset device this year, but also against the wishes of the company's design team. 
Now, the report goes on to say that Apple's industrial design team cautioned that devices in the category were not ready to launch it, and they really wanted to delay it until a lightweight AR glasses product was ready to go. And yes, that's the holy grail of AR glasses right now, but that would have been, wouldn't have been ready a year or two from now, but realistically several years later. And it does make sense that Apple would want to put something out in the market earlier to just even establish itself in this space. Now, the Apple headset has been in development for at least seven years, and they are expecting to sell around just 1 million units at a potential $3,000 price point. And if that still makes you go, yikes, no matter what it does, yeah, I'm there with you, yikes. But I'm also super intrigued by it. All right, a new report from analyst Ming-Chi Kuo is piggybacking on earlier rumors that Apple will release a redesigned HomePod with a seven inch display sometime in the first half of 2024. It could bring even deeper integration with Apple's other products and would be their answer to the Google Nest Hub or Echo Show, which is a big display combined with a smart speaker. Now, Apple's reportedly been rethinking their home strategy and look, they really need to after they, they've pretty much been playing this long game, chilling in the background for a while, and the smart home overall has felt like it stagnated some, and this could finally be an opportunity for Apple with the Matter platform opening up more compatibility with devices. Now, if they can bring compatibility for my Nest cameras, my Nest thermostat, and my smart blinds, then I'm paying attention. So could we see a new Apple Vision for the home with a new fresh user experience? Maybe, but the new HomePod, it left me thinking that there's a lot more room for Apple to do something more. I mean, it's a solid product, but I can't say it's great since it still doesn't sound as good as the original HomePod. Maybe new software features and its new processor will push me towards the new one, but that hasn't happened yet. And then its $299 price point is still higher than I'd like for what it is. So we will see how this all comes together. Okay, sticking with audio, Bloomberg's Mark Gurman reports that Apple is working on the new health features for their AirPods wireless earbuds. He says Apple will upgrade the AirPods to become a health tool in the next year or two and also add the ability to get hearing data of some sort in the future. Now, Apple has added new features like live listen and even conversation boost, but those aren't FDA approved and can't be used as an actual hearing aid replacement. But we've heard plenty of reports that Apple has intentions to add biometric sensors to the AirPods in the future. There's even a patent filing that details how it could detect temperature, heart rate, and perspiration level through contact with your skin and even add built-in motion sensors. Now, those are really more hardware related features, but we could always see new software features as well for Apple's best selling, the number one wireless earbuds everywhere. Like everything, everywhere, all at once. You gotta see that movie. All right, that is gonna do it for this video. If you like what you see, give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell. Ding! To get all my latest videos when they drop. And if you want more of that Apple goodness, you can check out my weekly Apple Bits XL audio podcast to get the latest deep dive with all these stories and new ones every week with special guests and an average 4.9 star rating with over 1,300 reviews. That can't be wrong. So check it out. Okay, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace and love.